So we're now in my project for the reactive microservices, the flights reactive microservices project. And uh, when I post the video, I'll give a link to the repository where you can go to get the, the code that's associated with this. And what I'm going to do to start out with, I'm just going to kind of walk through the architecture of this application without getting too far into the details at first. We'll, we'll come back and cover the details later. If you look at this, you can see that there are five main packages that are part of the server portion of this. There's the airline portion, the airport portion, the exchange portion, and the flight portion. As was the case with the earlier flight microservice implementation we looked at in a previous set of videos, the flight package is essentially going to play the role of the front end app gateway. And so it's it's kind of a it's sort of a special type of microservice that plays the role of kind of the mediator or the uh, facade to everything else. And then it goes ahead and redirects the operations to the appropriate backend microservices. And the backend microservices, as you can see, are exchange, airport, and airline. And what's interesting here, and we'll look at this when we look at the controllers, you'll see that the way in which the communication takes place is all based on reactive types like monos and fluxes, which thereby gives you a lot more asynchrony than you otherwise would have. There's a few other things that are worthy of note. We'll see them as we go through the examples in more detail. There's a uh, resources package that has resources that customize the behavior of all these other microservices in the app gateway, and we'll take a look at those things. But I think we're going to start by taking a look at the flight application. So the flight application is basically that, that front end app gateway, and it takes incoming HTTP requests from clients, and it forwards them to microservices in the flight listing app. These requests are mapped to asynchronous methods that use the reactive streams framework provided by Project Reactor to do various things asynchronously. So you can asynchronously find all the available flights. You can asynchronously find the best price for a flight. You can get a list of airports. You can find all the departure dates for a given pair of airports, and so on and so forth. And this class also plays the role of a Eureka client with respect to microservice discovery. And we'll see how that works. That, that's actually very similar to what we looked at when we looked at the flights microservice implementation in a previous video. There's a bunch of annotations here. There's Spring Boot, which basically says it's going to take advantage of the Spring Boot features like auto configuration, component scan, and so on. There's enable discovery client, which enables service registration and discovery. This app uses a fixed, this particular app uses a fixed port, but that's really the only thing that is fixed. And you'll see when we look at the properties file that that's how that works. There's a component scan annotation that tells Spring to scan the corresponding folders to find other components that can then be connected together and auto wired and so on. And then there's something called property source, which basically tells which property file to use for the Spring environment. If we go over here and we take a look at the property file, here's the property file. And you can see that this is the name of the microservice, which is really this app gateway. And uh, here's the port that the flight app gateway listens on. That's really the only fixed port in the whole application. And that's just there so that clients know where to go. Some other things we have here, we keep track of the service URL for the Eureka server. We use IP addresses instead of host names. We will uh, tell it not to register the flight app gateway with Eureka since it's going to be the front end app gateway. And then we're going to allow it to cache other information in the Eureka server and cache it locally so that it doesn't have to go back and look it up each time. Okay, so those are some of the key properties that are defined here. And notice how by using the declaration mechanisms, the declarative mechanisms we have in Spring, we're in a good position in order to be able to change those properties by, by modifying annotations or modifying files that are pointed to by annotations without having to go through and write, rewrite the code ourselves. Here's the main entry point into the flight application service or the app gateway. And as, as always, you can see it just says, hey, run this flight application and use the properties and annotations to do, do the thing. 
And if you recall, once you start this thing up, then uh, you can do other things like have clients connected. Like I said before, I'm not gonna go through, in, in this video, I'm not gonna go through all the nitty gritty details of how everything works. I'm just gonna kind of show you the overview of how it's architected. And so of course the, the app gateway is going to have a controller and that's the main entry point for all the remote clients. And this is what Spring uses Webflux in order to be able to take the incoming HTTP requests and then connect them with the appropriate endpoints. And this is just pretty traditional spring boot stuff. You can see we make this a REST controller so it can be automatically used to be an endpoint for HTTP requests. We put in the cross origin annotation, which is needed for Eureka redirection. And then we go ahead and define basically the, the key elements that are needed by the flight controller, which is the entry point into the rest of the app. So here we have a, an auto wired flight service. I'm not going to talk about flight service right now. We'll come back and talk about that later. Uh, that's basically the, the brains of all this thing though. That's, that's where the implementation does its thing. But I will talk briefly about the various endpoint methods. So we have one that is used to give back a flux of airport objects. So that's important when the client starts up and it wants to populate a GUI, for example, and it goes ahead and calls down to the flight service to get all the get all the airports that are listed. And there's a not surprising, there's an airports microservice that knows how to do this kind of stuff. So we'll we'll take a look at that implementation later. So that's one thing. Notice how this returns a flux, however, and that flux will emit airport objects. And it can do that asynchronously on the client side. So the call doesn't have to block. There's also another endpoint method here called find departure dates. And you can see you give it a departure airport and an arrival airport, and it's going to go ahead and give back a flux of dates. And these dates are then used in order to populate a GUI, like a calendar indicating what days flights are available. So you can use that to know when you can fly. So these are sort of things that a, a client app would need initially to kind of get started. And once again, notice how it returns a, a flux of these objects so it can come back asynchronously. Once the GUI has been established on the client side, then we can get into the really interesting methods. These are the ones that really show off the power of reactive programming. Right now, we're not talking about that, but we will. Uh, so we have a method called find flights where you give it the departure airport, the departure date, the arrival airport and the currency you want the price to be in. And that's going to go and look up all the, at look at all the airlines and find out all the flights and all the airlines that match those particular parameters, departure airport, arrival airport, departure date. And it gives back a, a flux of flight objects. And we'll take a look at how that works. It's very cool. But <clears throat> you can imagine that that might actually take a while to run to get all the results, but we can start streaming the results back as they show up. So. The client doesn't have to wait for everything to come back before it can start to populate a GUI, for example. And then another method we have here is called find best price. And once again, you give it a bunch of parameters and it goes out and it finds you the, the best price, which could have more than one. There could be a, a bunch of, a bunch of uh, flights that all have the best price. And so we get back a flux of flights that correspond to the best price. And we'll look at that, it's some pretty cool implementations later. And then the final method that's exposed, and it really doesn't have to be exposed, just expose it for fun, is one called get rate. And the get rate is going to take a from currency and a to currency, and it's going to go ahead and return a mono, which will emit the exchange rate. So once again, it's it's designed to be asynchronous. And so you'll get back a mono. And when that exchange rate computation is done, you'll know what the exchange rate is for the from currency and to the, the to currency. So those are the key interface methods that you see in the controller. We'll talk about the services later.